Good morning. My name is Dylan Jovenet from Behind the Markets. July 4th. Here we are. Happy July 4th. I just wanted to get out uh, a quick video to you today. Uh, I did record this the day before so that on July 4th, I could actually enjoy my myself. Take a day off, for goodness sake. But there's never really a day off when you own your own business, if I'm being totally honest. Um, anyway, who is your favorite founding father? You know, that's a question I want to know. I mean, most, you know, when I was growing up, it was George Washington, of course. George Washington is great because while George Washington gave up power, you know, you look across the Atlantic and Napoleon did not give up power. I remember Napoleon saying, oh, my God, he must be the greatest man that ever lived. My favorite. Now, you can pick some people say Thomas Jefferson, great founding father. I mean, my goodness, the Declaration of Independence is on my wall in my house and sometimes brings a tear to my eye when I read it. Others say Madison, another great, great thinker. Some say John Hancock. Uh, you know, there, there are so many great founding fathers to choose from. But for my money, my personal favorite is Alexander Hamilton. And I don't know, what I love about Hamilton is here you go, you, you have this guy, here you have this guy who basically is born in what is today Barbados, poor, orphan, you know, but, but when he was young, he had off the charts intelligence. And when he was young, he burned for success. I mean, he burned with a passion for success. He just knew or he believed that there was more for him out there. And, you know, this is a guy, again, you know, I mean, this is a guy during a monarchy, basically England, English monarchy, when the world did, where it wasn't really a meritocracy. So how was this guy going to get successful? Anyway, some people around where he worked, he worked for a shipping uh, company, and some people around him saw how brilliant he was, so they, they brought him to America. You know, and he went to King's College, which is now Columbia University. But right there, this young man who's super intelligent and super hardworking, which is kind of his superpower, war breaks out. He joins up the Continental Army and not long makes it onto George Washington's staff. And soon after is so competent and so hardworking becomes George Washington's aide de camp, his basically primary secretary, you know. And, you know, Hamilton does a lot of great things and wants to go to war, and he's so valuable to Washington. Washington says, look, I know you want to make a reputation for yourself in battle, but I can't afford to lose you. So he convinces, basically, Hamilton to stay with him throughout the war, except for one battle. But he basically, you know, guilt trips Hamilton to stay with him, and Hamilton does. Hamilton does what, what he has to do. But one of the things, you know, you, they say you can judge a man by the size of his enemies. And, you know, one of the things that's most striking to me about Hamilton is, you know, when the Articles of Confederation came out, the issue with the Articles of Confederation was that basically you it, it created too weak of a federal government where the states would have had too much power. And we could argue states' rights all we want. But if the states had too much power relative to the federal government, what would happen is that they would be like independent countries. And then you would have great powers from outside the United States playing one against the other, you know, playing Virginia against New York, playing New York against Massachusetts, playing Massachusetts against uh, North Carolina. So basically that would have created, you know, terrible conflict over time. And Hamilton, young man that he was, he perceived this. You know, when the Articles of Confederation collapsed, Hamilton joined George Washington, his presidency, his staff as Secretary of the Treasury. And what he did was he fought against Jefferson and Madison, who believed the state should have supreme power, and Hamilton, who believed the federal government should have power. Now, we could look at this today and say, well, of course, states' rights, the federal government has gone bonkers, and I couldn't agree with you more. It has too much power. The federal government has gone bonkers. But back then, what that really meant was that if the states had all the power, what that would mean was that over time, one state would end up gobbling up the other ones, the most powerful one. Let's say Virginia was the most powerful state at that time. Ultimately, it would have ended up trying to add New York, add North Carolina, whoever had the strongest army. They, over time, would have ended up gobbling each other up. So Hamilton's great insight was knowing this because he read history and saying, look, we have to take all the debt from all the individual states and put it under the federal government to unite the country. And you know what? He made an agreement with Jefferson and Madison, famously, where in exchange for having the federal government take the debt, 
Jefferson and Madison got Washington, D.C. located where it is, you know, right on the Potomac. You know, that was what they wanted for that deal. Now, you know, in public, Jefferson and Madison would say, oh, my God, states' rights, states' rights, et cetera, et cetera. But in private, they did cut this deal with Hamilton. And they understood, they perceived after the disastrous Articles of Confederation that you needed a unified federal government. Because, again, if you don't have a federal government, then think about it. If all the states were individual and there no federal government can control them, uh, all the states were individuals, then you'd have great powers, like I said earlier, from outside the country, uh, you know, going, going in there and playing each state against each other. You know, let's say France at the time would have backed New York, England would have backed Virginia, and, you know, they would have competed with Pennsylvania, they would have formed alliances, and they would have started chewing each other up, and there would have been war on the continent, which would have been terrible for us. Um, and that was in their interest to do it. If you're England and you're France, you want, you don't want us to become super powerful like we did. You certainly don't if you're England. If you want, if you're France, then you do up until the point where it messes with your stuff. So, and of course, Hamilton ends up dying. Not only does it create the New York Post, he writes 51 of the 84, 85 Federalist Papers. He creates the New York Post, and of course, he ends up dying in a duel, which when I was a kid and I first read about Al Alexander Hamilton, I was like, wait a minute. This guy died in a duel against Aaron Burr? I couldn't believe that. That was mind-boggling to me. So Hamilton is my favorite founding father. Gosh, he lived a great American life, didn't he? Just a great American life. Just a great American life. And uh, other presidents who live great American lives are, are always my favorite, like Teddy Roosevelt. I named my son after Teddy Roosevelt. What a great American life he lived. You know, I mean, they just go on and on. Reagan, you know, FDR, great American lives. We might not agree with everything they did, but they were true patriots. And they did every one of those people, every president of Washington, they did what they thought was in the best interest of this country. Agree or disagree, they believed. And uh, for that, they have bequeathed us this beautiful, beautiful, bountiful, amazing land that we have today. Have a great 4th of July.